I want to take my sons on a voyage. Show them the Hebridean islands that have been our home. I want them to see the people, the land, but above all this journey is about the Atlantic, without which there is nothing. Scotland is the land of my fathers. This country has shaped my life and the lives of my boys. From the natural beauty that surrounds us, to the history that is written across these islands, and the craft and the hard work of the people that live here. For 11 years, I've dived for scallops. I love the freedom, but I'm now coming to the end of this underwater life. Working at sea has taught me many lessons, but the most important is knowing when to walk away. I want to experience these islands now from a different perspective and travel across these waters in a new way. I've long worshipped the Atlantic. This ocean has been my guide, my teacher, never my enemy. And here, just like any wilderness, the feeling of being completely ignored is just the same. It's what freedom feels like. Iona has been a profoundly important spiritual place. For centuries, it was said to be the final resting place of Scottish kings. What fascinates me about Iona is that there is still a strong living link with the past. In 563 AD, St. Columba arrived with 12 followers and established his monastic community here. Anyone who visits this place can't help but feel it in the stones. There's something about the peace of Iona that inspires thought, reflection, and for some, prayer. Iona is all about kings and men, but for me, my true church is nature. I love the feeling of the waves, the call of the birds, and the sheer drama of sea, stone, and sky. And now we're heading to an island that is all about the power and magnitude of untouched nature. The first time you see Fingal's Cave, you understand why it inspired Mendelssohn, Keats, Wordsworth. This is nature's cathedral, written in stone. Basaltic lava cooled to form these hexagonal pillars of stone. Then the Atlantic has just slowly worked away to create this cave. The Gallic name for this place is Melodic Cave, and when you just listen to the sound of the waves, you understand why. Above the cave, is a territory inhabited by one of my favorite birds of all time, the puffin. They honestly look like they've been painted. It's really special to see this place with my sons, who although they've spent most of their lives here, have never got so close to puffins before.
Despite the distance, all the islands are connected by the ocean and by the bonds that have formed over the years. Set along the shores of Loch Spelvi, Inverlassel Mussels is one of many diverse marine businesses that thrive in Scotland. The community here is astounding. Everyone doing more than one job just to make it work. We're now meeting one man that captures that spirit in music. Angus McCall is one of Scotland's greatest living pipers, and it was an honour to hear him play at Guyland Castle on Kerrera. Angus's music is all about connection, not only to the people and the past, but also to the islands and the sea that connects us all. The engine of a boat becomes like a second heartbeat to us. You tune into its sound, you know when it's happy, and your heart stops if it ever stops. We're now heading to one of my favorite scallop diving spots. But first, we must navigate one of the most notorious stretches in these seas. Corrivrecken is from the Gallic word meaning cauldron of the speckled seas. Our voyage now takes us through this treacherous channel whose ferocious currents and whirlpools have terrified mariners for generations. There's such power in these millions of tons of water, moving with such force at the command of the wind and the moon. A good boat, a great engine, and profound humility are needed in places like this. I've dived in the sea around the Garvalax for most of my 11 years as a scallop diver. And it feels right that we are finishing our voyage here, and I'm sharing this moment with my sons. The most southerly of the four Garvalax islands is called Aliach and Nov, which means the island of the saints. I've always loved this spot, and there are ruins dating back to 542 AD. These are the remains of a monastery founded by St. Brendan, the navigator. What was life like here in those times of profound isolation? They would have looked over there and all around us here and just seen much the same. This was their world. There's an old saying which I really love. We have many lives to lead before we die. And I think my days as a scallop diver are coming to an end. These waters have taught me how to be humble and to know when it's time to walk away. It feels really good to go for a dive with Luke and to be carrying my scallop net with no real intent because I've got a feeling I'm going to be putting it away forever.
We cook our day's catch simply, and there's no better way to cook incredible shellfish. But I never get over the feeling of luck in my life to have had this chance to learn the skill of diving for scallops and to learn and find my way around places like this. Boys, how's it all been? It's been absolutely amazing, start to finish. It's been an been incredible journey. So many places, seen so many things. It is amazing traveling by boat, actually, isn't it? If you think about it, we've been to so many different places just west of Scotland. But that's freedom. There's one road on Earth, and it connects everything. It's the sea. The Atlantic is such an adventurous place. I was inspired to make this journey for Oscar and Luke. Without doubt, my greatest achievement on Earth is to say that these boys are my sons. Who knows where they will go in life, but I'm certain they'll never forget where they came from. <laughs>